Yeah, and it's also how... interesting, like, you know, the CIBC report that was recently out that showed excess cash is still growing. Right. How does that make this. sense? I've been saying this how? for over a year and people have been calling me a shill. And I'm like, no, man, my top 50 percent clients like finance finances right. wise is they're doing better than they they've ever better. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know what to tell you. But like what I'm seeing is like I'm getting tons of calls from people who are like, I have a shitload of cash on the sidelines. Tell me when and where. Find mm -hmm. me an assignment, a couple assignments that I can fleece somebody on. Like find me somewhere to park this capital. Yeah. Yep. and and uh and now you have the cibc data backing that anecdote up and i'm like yeah like this is this makes sense to me um and of course no one's going to be like rushing to deploy that capital while rate hikes are still happening but again like the gta is such a lever market there's so much debt on every purchase that you know it is a very sophisticated market Real estate is a primary topic of conversation for everybody from all walks of life. Everywhere. And so when rates stop going up, you're, the market is already thinking ahead, right? We, we saw that when rates first started hiking, like the GTA took the biggest bath first because it's forward looking and people price in their expectations very quickly. Whereas in these other smaller, mm -hmm. more affordable markets, you don't see that type of forward thinking. Makes sense. And that's, and that's exactly what it is, is the news travels fast. You're sitting at dinner talking to somebody and everyone's like, yeah, rates aren't rates are done. That's it. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden it's just like this, you know, spiraling out of control sentiment because when mm -hmm. things were going the other way, we know what those conversations were like. Don't buy, don't buy. Things aren't good. Everybody's going to be struggling. But the banks mm -hmm. came in and have bailed everybody out right now. I mean, the banks are holding mortgages, amortizations and reverse uh, negative yeah. amortizations like it's going out of style. They are going to pump this market until it's back to where they want it to be. And then they'll give everybody an exit strategy if they need to get out or not. You know, sure feels like it. Yeah. It sure yeah. feels like taking on ridiculous risks to a degree has been rewarded in this country repeatedly, especially through COVID in the last few years. And um, um, with the exception of people who went a little too far, which I've seen a few of in the assignment space. But December, I, I don't, I don't March think... 2020, December 2021 to March 2022. Those are the mistakes, but everybody else is going to be just fine. Yeah, but hold on a sec. Wait, because, okay, so that's one segment of people, right? Those are the end users that are in trouble because they did that. But there's got to be another wave. There's got to be multiple, um, like you were saying, how did you, uh, how did you describe them? Like s smaller, fast growing, um, balls to the wall developers, younger guys that, took on a lot of projects and good times and mm -hmm. like some of those have to come crashing down i think because 100%. I don't, like i've i've got a list of guys that i've just been going like how the fuck do these guys do this and where the fuck are they getting all this money from and how are they putting so many deals together and like not even in toronto like all across the states and all over the place like there's some guys that are like huge all of a sudden and like not in like 10 years like in like six years and i gotta think that like some of those guys are gonna go and then so what happens when that happens to all those end users right and even in the state view homes thing like what happens to all the purchasers or people that are reservationists or whatever that you call them right like what happens to all these people and their money because this is not like a terry on thing is it terry on covers up to a hundred thousand dollars or ten even for place. fraud bank fraud I don't know. So that's I where things know. get interesting. But this also is... just like if you if you bought a two hundred thousand dollar freehold with twenty percent down, a hundred grand being covered isn't exactly a breath of fresh air to you. Well, I mean better than nothing, but yeah. It's certainly I mean... better than nothing. But but I mean and then that's one of the that's one of the nice things about condos. Like, hey, they take so long to build. So the likelihood of you closing negative equity are is much lower than freehold, right? Mm -hmm. When you're taking five, six years to build and B, I can't sell until I have, I can't collect your deposits until I have excess condominium deposit insurance. I don't have an option as a developer. So your, your entire deposit amount is insured. Well, that um, causes all other kinds of problems. Right. But, but uh, yeah, from a consumer standpoint, at least that, that at least that's there for you.